for me, the journey from Cape Town to a farm just outside Malmesbury is not a difficult one. It's one and a half hours of rolling, beautiful, uncomplicated scenery. It's a process of witnessing, gently taking things in and reflecting on it all. Real life's journey is a lot more confronting. So what happens when you come to a crossroads in your life? One where your action or inaction determines whether you'll live or die. Where your journey comes to a momentary powerful halt, watching and waiting to see what you will do. Renowned photographer Tracy Derrick faced such a crossroads. It forced an unexpected detour, shattering, life-changing and profound. Tracy's darkroom is her sanctuary, her meditation and her passion. She loves to work in black and white, her photos capturing rituals and sacred intimate spaces, the inner sanctum of communities. Events and experiences most of us will never witness firsthand, unless we're lucky enough to be invited in. This is Tracy's world. The waters of life rituals of the Zion Church the red ochre people of northern Namibia whose ancient lifestyle is being threatened. And portraits of women prisoners reflecting an evocative subculture seen by few. My interest, I think, from my traveling has always been to find different cultures. That's what I find exciting, is being with people that we wouldn't normally be with. Sex workers, women, prison, the Sangormas, farm laborers. I even went to live with the Himba, with the translator. For me, it was a way to keep on traveling. And even if I'm traveling with the sex workers in Woodstock, it's a travel and it's somewhere different. Tracy, a lot of your work has dealt with ritual and sacred spaces. How are you in that space? I feel more at home there than anywhere else. Those rituals are so connected to earth, to base, to ancestors. Every ritual that I went to, I kind of spaced out with them. We would stay up all night and then go down to Monwabisi Beach and do baptisms. I was in the water as well me and my dog, Salvador. Incredibly cleansing experiences. What Trace is very much about is about the integrity and the truth of that moment of scene. She's gained a lot of recognition globally, but her work is quite elusive. Historically, she has photographed the subjectivity of the person that she photographed. So she, in a sense, she spends a lot of time with people and then they become used to her and then they start to show her their inner life. This is a photograph of myself and Clive, my dog companion, taken at the Cape Franklin Art Hotel, which is an art hotel I used to have in Ribe Castile. I think that she's shown the bond between Clive and I. She and I are both dog people, so you know, if we are to be of a tribe, we would be of the tribe of dog. When I met Trace, it was 1991. It was the first time I came here to South Africa with a friend, and she just came back from Brazil. And I met her actually in this house also. She started off getting very strong in her photography at that time also, yeah? so we had lots to share. She always was, uh, I don't know, energetic in the sense, lots of ideas, lots of uh, projects she wanted to be involved with. That's also like how we manifested our friend here in our house. You know, it's very important to have her work here uh, and live with it. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I've always been a big fan of hers anyway. So. Yeah, those are the pictures of the Church of Zion and That's then the Himba. I hitched up the Amazons and, I mean, all over, and always with this desire to document. It certainly wasn't ideas of exhibitions or I had no ideas of that. 
had no ideas of making big prints, putting together a story. It was fun and it was a way to start meeting people. I used my last thousand dollars and I went to School of Visual Arts and did a night course in printing. And I met a friend of mine, Neil and Amanda, and they used to sneak me into Parsons School of Photography so I could use the dark rooms. And that's when it really happened then. Something just like clicked in me, you know? This is what I want to do. When I decided to come back, I had a dark room in the graphic workshop in observatory with Sue Williamson and various artists. That was a very creative time, wonderful time. And then eventually moved to Rebex Rafir. And I lived there for seven years without electricity. Tess was born and she was born there. I was 39 and had a home birth with no lights. Eventually all the candles and lamps had gone out and she was born with a torch. A year and a half later, Amy came and we adopted her from East London. From there, they have been so much a part of my life and I've documented them in black and white since growing up. Complete healthy food. You have to look in a magazine for pictures and then you have to put it Cut out. So I was diagnosed in 2008, so Tess was eight and Amy would have been six. I had had a lump for some years and I had had it seen too and told it was probably an infected milk duct, which is quite a common thing and I didn't take it any further. And interesting, I separated from my partner of 10 years, my children's father, in 2007. And then 2008, the lump started to change and I knew that I actually had to deal with it. I knew this was going to be cancer.